start the thing for me. Please. Amen. I do believe it is time to begin service tonight. Amen. We're glad to be back in the house of the Lord. We had a wonderful service this morning, and uh, we're thankful that uh, the Spirit of God met with us in a special way. It was a beautiful Sunday morning service, but we're looking forward to what God is going to do tonight in this service. And so with that, let's all stand and let's go before the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight for your Spirit. We thank you for the presence of God. We thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to be in your house, God, to minister, to worship, to praise. God, to give up ourselves to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remain standing, and uh, we're going to just sing a praise song. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. We're just going to get in and sing and have a good time tonight. Possibilities in God are great, are wonderful. 
And as I was telling someone before service, um, you better get on board because the train is, we're, 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 we're keeping it moving. We have work to do. We just believe that God is getting ready to do something wonderful. God's getting ready to do something great. God is getting ready to take us up. And so we're, we're just thankful. We just want everyone that we're supposed to have, all the people that God has given us, to come on with us and let's, let's go forward, let's go onward, and let's go upward. And uh, so we're excited about that. Once again, thank you, each and every one of you for praying for my grandson. I'm so glad um, that he's healthy. That he's healthy, my daughter is healthy, everything went okay, and I'm thankful for that. And, and I do would like for you to pray. My wife will be returning, um, I think it's Thursday, she'll be returning. But in the meantime, so pray for her that she have a safe trip home. But we're having a special, special service Wednesday night. Uh, Reverend Devonshire will be here. And uh, he's our regional overseer. He's from Pitt, the Pittsburgh area. And uh, he'll be here. And uh, his family should be here. He, he's going to be visiting with his family. But he'll also be in service with us Wednesday night. We're really calling upon everybody. Let's get this new year started out with a big bang. And let's, let's get in here. Let's have church. And let's give God all the praise and the glory and the honor that he deserves. Amen. And so we're looking forward to that. We're excited about it. We just want to make sure that God gets all the glory and that we do everything we need to do to make this thing a success. Amen. Amen. So God bless you is our prayer. Um, I, uh, we're we're going to receive the tithes and offerings, but we'll do that a little later. And uh, we do know that God blesses a cheerful giver. And uh, so... Anyway, we're thankful, and we'll, we appreciate all that God is doing. I'd like to go back to the message that I started this morning, found in Luke chapter 11 and verse 1. And we introduced the message, and the title of the message is Let's Pray. Let's pray. We need to pray. The church needs to pray. The body of Christ needs to pray. We need to get the mind of God. We're tolerating and putting up with too much stuff in our life when we have everything at our disposal. All we have to do is pray. Do you not know that God does nothing but an answer to prayer? The Bible said men ought to always pray and not faint. He that fainted in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Let me repeat that. He that fainted, in other words, get weak, give up, fall away, lose strength. He that fainted in the day of adversity, your strength is small. And so I don't want to be a statistic. I'm going to have to preach about that someday, being a spiritual statistic. Being a spirit. Some people are just a statistic. I believe that a lot of people love God. I believe a lot of people like to come to church. I believe a lot of people like all the things that are associated with church, but they're not ready to commit their lives to God. They still want to do what they want to do, they still want to live how they want to live, but yet come to church and be okay or serve God and be okay. But it doesn't work that way. When we come to God, we must surrender our life to him. And the sooner we understand that, the better off we'll be. You are going to be fighting a losing battle for the rest of your life if you think you're going to serve God and do what you want to do. It doesn't work that way. John the Baptist figured this out. What did he say? I must decrease and he must increase. In other words, less of me and more of him. Less of me and more of him. 
And then uh, Peter, God bless you, sister. You know what I've been guilty to. Um, Peter also figured this thing out. He said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I think that's Peter chapter 5. I could be wrong, but humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may what? Exalt you in due time. That means that when you humble yourself, that means it's less of you and more of God. It really does take humility to serve God. It really does. Because you have to take self out of the equation. You have to take your ego out of the equation. You have to take your pride out of the equation and just say, God, I'm going to surrender. God, I'm going to believe you. Uh, even though I don't understand, even though I can't see, even though I don't know what's going to happen, I trust you. I believe you. You're proven. Don't you know God has a proven track record? God has a proven track record. We trust people without a proven track record more than we trust God with a track record. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. But anyway, <clears throat> as you can tell, my voice is uh, on the blink. Luke 11 and 1, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place. Let me turn this down just a little bit. I believe it's a little bit too loud. All right. I think, I think we can work with that. Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. And it came to pass, Luke chapter 11, verse 1, that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, in other words, when he stopped praying, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. And as I shared this morning, they had to be observing him. They had to be looking on. They had to be peeping in on what Jesus was doing. And upon observing him, and upon looking at him praying and talking to God and communicating with God and, and making no doubt the presence of God was there. And the, maybe it was some of the words he used and how he told God that he was dependent upon him and, and on and on and on. No doubt, and when the prayers were over, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us how to do what you're doing. Is not Christ our example? Is not Christ our example? Yes, he's our example. And so with that, I'd like to continue this message. Let's pray. We need to pray, church. We need to pray, mothers, you need to pray. Dads, you need to pray. Uh, single men and single women, we need to pray. Um, uncles and aunts, we need to pray. Cousins and relations in all uh, walks of life, we need to pray. Prayer is something, for whatever reason, seemingly it's not important on the totem pole. It seems like in churches we have all these programs and all this, we're doing this and doing that. We have programmed God right out of the church. We have uh, programmed God, we got this kind of group and that kind of group. And this group meets in the church and, and we're doing, we're going to have this function and have that function. But what we really need is a practice. What we really need is to learn how to talk to God. What we really need is to get our communication skills right between us and God. And I believe that it will change our world. I believe it will change our church. I believe it will change McKee's Rocks if every church started praying. If all Christians really started praying. If we really started seeking God with all of our heart. I really believe it will change the world. It will change our country. It will change our state. It will change our city. And it will change our community. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Oh, glory to God. Why don't you slip your hands up and thank God right now. 
lift your hands up and thank God. Worship God. Worship God in the beauty of holiness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Brother Michael, could you do me a favor and stand and pray over the message and message, please, sir? Heavenly Father, please bless the words coming out of my speaker's mouth and let it glorify you. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Thank you, brother. We appreciate it. Appreciate that. Lord, teach us to pray. And this morning, in, in ministering in this, I looked up or I shared some definitions. And I believe by sharing these definitions, it will open up our understanding about prayer. It will open up our insight. It will give us insight. And it will give us uh, a more relative uh, viewing, uh, a view, a, a more relative view of what it is that God wants from us. Because when we go to God in prayer and we talk to Him, and then we are quiet and let God talk to us, and we have that kind of communication going on, you talk to God, and then you let God talk to you. You talk to God, and you let God talk to you. I promise you that God will move in your life. I promise you that God will open up your understanding. God will show you how to lead your family. God will show you how to take care of your finances. God will show you how to be a better person, how to be a better man or woman, how to have how to work your job situation. I, I promise you, uh, if you walk with God, uh, if you talk to him regularly, uh, and if you let him talk to you regularly, uh, it'll change uh, your whole outlook uh, on life. Let's pray. The word teach means to learn. Lord, I want to learn. Lord, I want to learn. I'm watching you. I'm observing you. I'm, I'm seeing how you're talking to the Father. I'm seeing how you're communicating. And then when he was finished, they said, teach us. Learn, Lord, I need to, I want to learn how to pray. I want to learn. I want you to instruct us. We need instructions on prayer. And that's what we're doing tonight. It's time to turn our attention to God. It's time to turn our focus to God. I believe we can win souls if we'll pray. I believe God can save people if we'll pray. I believe God can deliver people if we'll pray. I believe God will fill with the Holy Ghost if we'll pray. I believe God will heal the sick. I believe God will deliver those that are bound in their minds and in their hearts. I believe God can heal the drug addict. I believe God can heal the stripper. I believe God can work and move in the prostitute. I believe that God can deliver those that are bound by pornography. I believe God tonight that he has power to help us to quit stealing or to quit telling lies or whatever the case may be. But we've got to pray. And I'm talking about really communicate with God and allow him to speak to us, to tell us, to guide us, and we'll be better in our lives. Lord, instruct us. Lord, help us to learn how to pray. And then the word pray. Pray has two components to it. Prayer has two components to it. Number one, supplication. Supplication is one component. The other one is worship. And a lot of times people don't associate worship with prayer. But it is. But it is. Supplication means to petition or to entreat God for help. But to do it humbly. In other words, humble down and ask God for help. Humble down and petition God for the needs in your life. 
Humble yourself down. And as I shared this morning, some of us are so full of pride. Some of us are so full of ego. Some of us want to keep up this little facade that we have. We want everybody to think we're okay. We want everybody to think we're strong. We want everybody to think we have it all put together. We want everybody to think I'm all this and that. Uh, instead of humbling down uh, and saying, God, uh, I messed up. Uh, God, uh, I took a wrong turn. Uh, God, uh, I made some bad decisions. Uh, but I'm humbling to come before you uh, and asking you uh, to help me to change. Uh, to help me to do right. Uh, to help me to be faithful. To help me to be obedient. Uh, to help me to do what you want me to do. Supplication. And then, and then prayer is not only supplication, but it's worship. It's worship. Worship is recognizing God, reverencing God, holding God up in high regard and high esteem. Uh, worshiping God tonight. Worship God with me this evening. Let's give him the praise. Let's give him the honor. Let's give him, let's worship him in beauty, in the beauty of holiness. Uh, let's give God the worship that he's due. Uh, let's come before him without supplication. Uh, and say, God, I'm coming before you. Uh, I'm going to humble myself uh, under the mighty hand of God. Uh, because I want you to be exalted, God. Uh, and when you're exalted, I'll be exalted. Uh, God, when you're where you're supposed to be, I'll be where I'm supposed to be. Uh, it's time to pray. Uh, let's pray tonight. Uh, let's call upon the only one uh, who can meet the need. Uh, let's call upon the only one uh, that can provide what we have need of. Uh, his name is Jesus. And then right after that, he gave them the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer came right after that, right? But in Luke, he gave the short version. In Luke, he gave the short version of the Lord's Prayer. But what a lot of people don't know is, a lot of people think that when the Lord said that, that that's the prayer they're supposed to pray every day. But the Lord's Prayer is, excuse me, is not a prayer necessary. Now you can pray the Lord's Prayer. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't pray the Lord's Prayer because it's good, it's wonderful. But he gave us a model. He gave us a model to go by. He gave us a, a pattern, an example, a template. And so you see how I'm praying here? This is a template. This is a pattern. This is something you can kind of go off of to build your own prayer life, to put your own prayer life together. Amen. Because uh, your prayer life a lot of times have other specific things that you have need of. And just saying the Lord's Prayer is not enough. And then in Matthew chapter 6, not only did he share this, he expanded upon it. He expanded upon it. He said, after this manner. He said, after this manner. In Matthew 6, 9 through 15, he said, after this manner. In other words, you don't have to get up every day and repeat this. But this is a model and a pattern that you can go off of to expand and build your own prayer life upon. He said, after this manner, therefore, Pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, he didn't say all of this in, in Luke, but in Matthew, he expanded. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our what? Debtors. And, uh, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
And then he went on to say this in verse 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. So not only did he give the Lord's Prayer, but he expanded on it, talked a little bit more, or Matthew talked a little bit more about it. What are we talking about tonight? Let's pray. Let's pray. It's time to talk to the one that created the universe. It's time to talk to the one that raised Lazarus from the dead. It's time to communicate with the one that healed the woman that was bent over in the temple. It's time to talk to the one that healed blind Bartimaeus' eyes. It's time to talk to the one that we know has the power to answer our prayer. And his name is Jesus. Let's pray. Another example is the serenity prayer. How many of you have heard of the serenity prayer? The serenity prayer is by far one of the most famous prayers ever prayed. Uh, it was written in the 1800s by Reinhold Nigel, Nigel Heard. How do you pronounce his name? It's a funny name. In the 1800s, he wrote the prayer of serenity or the serenity prayer. And most people already know what, what it is. But it only rose to popularity in the 1940s when the uh, Alcoholic Anonymous took it and incorporated it into their uh, program to help people to overcome drinking. And, 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 and so they took it up and then, but you know what they did? A lot of people might not know this. They took that prayer and they shortened it. And they shortened it. And, uh, and so it's a wonderful prayer. It says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. It usually stops right there, don't it? Usually. And, but you know that there's a whole lot more to this prayer than that. It says, and, and it says, living one day at a time. Enjoying one moment at a time. Accepting hardships as the pathway to peace. Now, how many times have you heard alcoholic anonymous people pray that? Accepting hardships as a pathway to peace. Taking as he did, as he did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. In other words, understanding the world as it is, as Jesus did. And trusting that he will make things right. Listen at this. This thing is powerful. He said trusting that he will make things right if I surrender to his will. So that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever and ever in the next. Now, I've never heard the serenity, all that. They always cut the serenity prayer off. Amen, but there's a whole lot more. Now, we can pray that prayer. I said, we can pray that prayer. I said, let's pray tonight. Let's really get to God. Let's get the mind of God, and let's get serious about being a Christian. Let's get serious about walking with God. Let's get serious about getting to know him in a better way. Let's get serious about talking to God and then God talking to us. So what are we going to do when we pray? Okay. The first thing we're going to do is Mark, is Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye Receive them. And ye shall what? Have them. You want me to read that again? Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. 
He said, whatsoever things you desire. Think about that. God said that these, he said, whatever things you, and he knows that if you really love him, God knows that if you really love him and you're really endeavoring to do the right thing, you're not going to ask for anything wrong. You're not going to ask for anything that you shouldn't have. He said, whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray. He ain't going to just give it to you. You have to pray. And so even, let's say, even if you did want to ask for something wrong, before you, you're not going to get it because you got to pray. And when you pray, you're running it by God. Is that, can, I, can I get it with you? You know how, many, how much problems God has kept us out of because we prayed? You know how many issues God kept us away from because we took time to pray? God, I need to run this by you. God, I need to tell you about this woman that I want to date or this man that I want to date. God, I, I want to do this. Uh, I have a desire to do this. Uh, what do you think about it? Uh, God, uh, I want to get more educated. Uh, God, I need a job. Uh, uh, God, I need a, uh, uh, you to provide a place for me to live uh, or whatever the case may be. Uh, if you'll run it by God, uh, if you'll communicate it with God, uh, he'll communicate back to you. Uh, and I guarantee you, uh, he'll answer uh, your prayer. Uh, you might not like it, uh, but it'll be the best thing for you. So, what am I saying? When you pray, faith must be exercised. He said, when you pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall what? And ye shall have. There is nothing that God won't do for you if your heart's right. He said, no good thing will I withhold from them that walk right before me. He said, if you, if you believe the things that you desire, if you believe, he said, you shall have them. Tonight, all you got to do is have faith in God. Say, say, what's that little, say a little prayer for me. Say a little prayer for you. Hey, we just need to pray. And we need to talk to God tonight. Uh, let's pray. Uh, but when we pray, uh, we got to have faith in God. Do you believe? Uh, we know he will. We know God can, don't we? We know God can, but do you believe he will? We know God can, but do you believe? The second thing found in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Philippians 4 and verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. What's the next thing we need to do when we pray? We need to have a thankful heart. When you pray, pray with gratitude. Pray and be appreciative to God that you're able to talk to him. God, I'm so honored that I can come to you. God, I'm so honored uh, that you're hearing my prayer. I'm so honored uh, that you're in my life uh, and you're my Lord uh, and you're my Savior. Uh, I'm so grateful. Uh, I'm so honored, God, uh, that I have somebody uh, that have my best interest uh, at heart. Do it with a thankful heart, with a grateful heart. We need to stop going to God bitter. We need to stop going with God with angst. We need to stop going to God frustrated. We need to stop going with going to God praying, but not really believing that he's going to answer your prayer. But when you go to him, say, God, I thank you. God, I'm so grateful because I know you've got the power. 
God, I'm so grateful and I'm so honored to, uh, to know you uh, and to realize, God, uh, that my petition uh, is in front of you. And my petition is being worked on. Uh, and I know, God, by faith, you're going to put it together. Uh, and for that, uh, I'm thankful. James chapter 5, verse 16. Let's pray tonight. You're going to pray with me tonight? I said, you're going to pray with me tonight? Or we're going to keep on living the way we've been living? We're going to keep doing the way we've been doing? We're going to keep accepting things being not done? We're going to keep accepting your prayers not being answered? Or we're going to just keep accepting things not being accomplished? Or we're going to let God give us an attitude adjustment? Are we going to let God adjust our thinking? Are we going to let God adjust who we are? James 5 and 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. You know something else we need to do when we pray? We need to pray for other people. You know, this is not just about us. This church is not about me. This church is not just about you. But when we pray, we need to pray for others. Don't you know that when you help other people get what they need, when you care about other people, the law of sowing and reaping comes into play and you don't even realize it. By caring for other people, doing for other people, praying for other people, you're returning that goodwill to your life. You're returning the favor of God back to your life. Uh, because he said, whatsoever a man soweth, uh, that shall he also reap. Uh, he said uh, uh, that we ought to confess our faults to one another and then pray for one another. I have a lot of friends. Sometimes I know what's going on. Sometimes I don't. But when I do, I pray for them. We don't need to go around gossiping. We don't need to go around finding fault with people. We don't need to go around criticizing people or putting their business out on, on Front Street or putting their business out there. The Bible said we're supposed to pray. Uh, uh, let's pray tonight. Uh, let's be the best Christians that we can be. Uh, let's do it with a thankful heart. Uh, and let's do it by faith. Uh, and let's say, God, uh, not only do I want you to bless my life, uh, but I want you to bless my brother. Uh, not only do I want you to bless my life, uh, I want you to bless my sister. Uh, I want you to help my mother. Uh, I want you to help my father. Uh, I I want you to help my, my family and on and on and on. Pray for the people on your job. Pray, pray for the people in your neighborhood. And on and on and on. Let's pray. The disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us. Lord, instruct us. Give us guidance on how to pray, how to supplicate, how to worship. Prayer is supplication in worship. Uh, coming to God in humility and then giving him all the praise, giving him all the honor, giving him all the glory, putting God on a pedestal. If there's anybody you want to put on a pedestal, it's God. You don't put humans on pedestals. We put God. Thou shalt have no other God before him. Are you with me? Him only shall we worship. Amen. And that's why tonight I give him the praise. And that's why tonight I give him the glory. And that's why tonight I worship him. Lord, I worship you. I praise you and I give you the glory and the honor. Last but not least, John 15 and 7. John 15 and 7 to finish this up. He said, if you abide in me and and my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what you will. I want you to stop and think about these things. He said, if you abide in me, and you abide in his words, ye shall ask what you will, 
and it shall be done unto you. Guarantee. Uh, the guarantee of God. He said, if you abide in me and you abide in my word, when you ask, it shall be done. Sister Angie, we're thanking God for touching your sister. It shall be done. Uh, she's up in that nursing home in Squirrel Hill. God touch her by the Holy Ghost, we pray. I'm saying, I'm, I'm putting out prayer right now uh, for Brother Michael. Brother Michael, for your mother. We're putting prayer out for her tonight. Amen. Up, 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 up there and in, in, up uh, in the wilderness in Pennsylvania. Amen. My prayer is that God will touch her. That God will bless her and her house. And on and on and on. Lord, I pray. You said if we ask in your name, it shall be done. We pray for Miss Gloria in Kentucky. And God, we pray for Mama Cobb down in Florida. And we pray for Sister Hazel out near Mount Noble. And we pray for all our other brothers and sisters. Lord, I pray for a special friend of mine over in Kansas that has COVID and has pneumonia in both lungs. God, I pray, God, that you touch, that you heal, that you deliver. And God, I pray that you save souls. Save souls, God. Bless this church. Help us all to be what you want us to be. Yes. Let's say. Hallelujah. Let's pray tonight. Let's pray tonight. Let's get the mind of God. I said, let's get the mind of God tonight. Whatever you have need of. Yeah, go ahead, sister. Whatever you have need of tonight.